The topic covered in chapter 16 is autoimmunity. And so we call it disruption of healthy tissue because it is an immune response against self tissue that normally would be healthy, but for some reason is being attacked by the immune system. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and advance the slide. That would be what I was trying to do there. <laughs> so we, we really kind of consider then a whole group of diseases that are, they're typically chronic in that they take time for them to occur. But once they have started and they continue through their progression, they um, tend to misdirect healthy immune cells to start to attack self. And so it is an adaptive immune response. It's just an inappropriate adaptive immune response because it's attacking healthy self tissue rather than foreign pathogenic or invading organisms. And so this group of conditions are collectively called autoimmune diseases. And these autoimmune diseases are much more common in industrialized nations, kind of like what we saw with allergy and hypersensitivities. And we see them increasing in over time, likely due to changes occurring in the way humans interact with their environment, um, the environment in which they live and the things they eat and the animals they're around and the other, you know, other things that they're interacting with. You know, as we change, uh, we see changes uh, occurring with autoimmunity as well. And uh, yes, autoimmune diseases are kind of grouped into a, a grouping together based on attacking of self tissue, but there is a lot of variability across these different diseases in the types of tissue that are affected. Um, is it widespread or is it very focused on a certain specific cell type? Um, uh, does it affect males? Does it affect females uh, more often than the other? And so there is a very wide variety, but the underlying similarity is that self healthy self tissue is affected. And so this, this um, immune response is caused by both humoral antibody, as well as cellular T cell mediated, where we have healthy tissue being attacked as though they were foreign to the body. And because of that, we see both antibodies and cellular, they kind of can resemble hypersensitivities. So we looked at type two, well, we looked at the four types of hypersensitivities a few chapters ago, but autoimmunity uh, can resemble either two, three, or four. We'll look at each one of those individually. The important thing to keep in mind is that um, once an autoimmune response has started, it's pretty difficult to shut down. Usually it will continue throughout the individual's life till A, that whatever target is, is completely gone. Um, or the, um, the pace, the, the person, um, well, can stop it somehow. Right. Um, or at least slow it down. And as tissues get broken down or destroyed by the immune system, function of those tissues decreases or is lost completely. And so there tends to be an increase in severity over time. And so we, that's why we call it more of a chronic type of disease. And because the disease causing antibody and effector cells uh, are going to recognize self antigen, um, we can kind of say then that an autoimmune disease comes about when there's a loss of tolerance or loss of self tolerance or some sort of failure in the ability of the immune system to maintain tolerance or prevent those B cells or T cells from escaping that recognize self antigen. And we know quite a lot about autoimmune diseases once they've started and once they're progressing and what's happening and the effects that have come about because of that. What we don't know very much about is what actually initiates these types of responses. What triggers the body to all of a sudden start recognizing self 
antigen. That one's a little more difficult to understand because oftentimes we don't know that an individual has an autoimmune disease until it has progressed to the point where tissue function is affected and symptoms start to show. So or, or mimic one of the three um, types of hypersensitivity, starting with type two hypersensitivity. We call that that is a case where it's going to be antibody mediated, but that antibody is going to recognize a self, an altered self protein on a cell. And then the body will generate an antibody mediated response against that altered protein or against some sort of cell surface component, self antigen. So hemolytic anemias where RH factor is recognized, that's an antibody driven response. Antibodies tag it for destruction, either by phagocytosis or by uh, NK cells. We see the same thing in um, type two diabetes where we have antibodies recognizing the insulin receptor and blocking it. Um, Graves disease, antibodies are recognizing the, the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor and um, turning it on. And so it's con constantly secreting um, thyroid uh, hormone. Uh, so these are all antibody driven. And so that's why they are grouped into what we kind of see as like a type two hypersensitivity. Type three hypersensitivities are also antibody mediated, but rather immune complexes build up inside of the vascular tissue. And so anytime that we see an autoimmune disease where an antibody attaches to something and blocks up and forms a, a blockage in the vascular tissue, uh, that's going to relate to a type three hypersensitivity. So um, uh, lupus, you'll notice that all of these diseases listed here affect highly vascular organs like the kidney or um, just vasculitis throughout the throughout the body. Um, but the like in lupus, for example, you see immune complexes forming and then depositing in the glomerial um, in the glomerial um, in the nephrons, glomerulus in the nephrons, um, depositing in the joints. You see there's arthritis that's painful that can destroy the tissue in which those deposits occur. And then if it's cell mediated autoimmunity, that's going to represent what we talked about with type four hypersensitivities because it's driven by T cells. And so type one diabetes, classic example, for whatever reason, all of a sudden the beta cells look like a threat to the immune system. And the, um, there is a response against beta cells in the pancreas and they're destroyed until they're completely gone. Rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis. Again, self antigens are, are recognized as threatening and attacked. And then there will be um, destruction of those tissues. If it's rheumatoid arthritis, it's going to be in the joints and you end up getting destruction of the synovial linings. Uh, and if it's multiple sclerosis, you get destruction of the myelin around the brain. And so you can have brain um, degradation and then the issues that go along with uh, whatever neurons are being destroyed. But again, these are all cell mediated. And so they fall under the type four hypersensitivity umbrella. Okay, that's where we'll stop with this first lecture. And then we'll look at um, more specific mechanisms in the second lecture.